Budget-priced HTs are often the gateway into the hobby for new hams and are often a staple for more experienced hams, go bags, and outdoor activities. Let's take a look at some of the best and not so best budget HTs for 2023. Hi, and welcome to the Gadget Talk channel, where we do reviews and how-tos on a variety of electronic gadgets that catch my eye. If you find this video helpful, please like, comment, share, and subscribe to the Gadget Talk channel. I really appreciate it. After slowdowns due to the pandemic and chip shortages in the early 2020s, 2023 has seen the floodgates open when it comes to new amateur handheld transmitters or HTs. I originally planned on doing a single video covering the 2023 HT markets, but quickly gave up on that, and I decided to do one each on budget HTs and another on moderately priced and premium HTs instead. In this video, we'll be looking at a handful of budget HTs that were either recently released or continue to get good marks in the budget category. Most of these radios I've reviewed and used. There will be a couple we'll discuss that I'll rely on the review of others and radio-specific spec sheets. Speaking of spec sheets, let's cover some of what has become the new standard for features in this price category. First is large color screens. Some of the HTs have the older block style fonts, but many have large modern fonts, making them quite attractive. The drawback to these screens is they tend to wash out in bright sunlight. If you spend a lot of time outside in the bright sunlight, you'll want to keep that in mind. Another feature of the newest HTs is a large channel capacity. It's not unusual to find radios with 200 channels at the low end and up to 999 channels on the high end. Frankly, I think this is mainly a marketing ploy as I doubt many hams will come anywhere close to using 999 channels, but there we are. Still another of the features in the latest round of ham HTs is the ability to tune the air traffic control frequencies and receive those in Amplitude Modulation, or AM. I've tried several HTs with this airband capability, and while they will definitely pick up the signals, eh, the audio quality is pretty poor. Again, like the huge number of channels feature, for many, airband is cool, but isn't a big deal. There has also been an increase in radios with high or higher ingress protection scores. IP scores of 54 or so will be safe outside and in the rain, while IP67 radios can be submerged in a meter of water for up to 30 minutes. If you do a lot of canoeing or kayaking with your radio, this will be helpful, but otherwise, it may be overkill. On the other hand, since these are budget HTs, you are getting more features for your money. That's certainly true. More common in the higher price market, even some budget HTs come with GPS receivers and the ability to plot your relative location to others who are using the same radio brand. I haven't tested a cross-band interoperability, so I can't really speak to that. The GPS in budget radios is not APRS, however. To wrap up this short feature list is USB-C charging and the ability to receive and display signals, frequency, and CTCSS or DCS codes. This second feature is often called wireless frequency copy. What hasn't changed is 3 to 4 watts of output power for radios rated as up to 5 watts, and usually 6 to 8 watts of power on radios rated up to 10 watts. On the negative side is signal purity. 
Several of the radios that didn't make the list have some serious issues with harmonics and spurious transmissions. Recall that transmitters with the power outputs of 25 watts or less have to have spurs that are below minus 40 dBm, below that fundamental, and be under 0 0.025 milliwatts. The ones I had here I tested using a tiny SA signal analyzer. It's a consumer grade piece of kit, so the results aren't lab quality, but the radios that were off were way off. Let's take a look at the HTs that made the list. Your list might be different, but here's mine. They're in no particular order. Unless otherwise noted, they will cost you about $35 US. First is the Baofeng GM13 Pro. The GM13 Pro has been around a while and has the 999 channels and USB charging features that are very popular. It has a fairly small form factor and can be programmed from the faceplate or Baofeng CPS. It can be found advertised with 10 watt output and has the smallish LCD screen that doesn't suffer from washout in bright light. Signal wise, it was clean. Next is the Baofeng GT5R. This was Radiotity's special order with Baofeng to meet FCC certification requirements. It's the UV5R with all the same features and limitations. This includes no USB charging and only 128 memory channels. Priced similarly to the UV5R, the GT5R has a very clean signal, unlike some of the earlier UV5R radios. A bit older, it's still a good choice for a budget-conscious new ham in 2023. Staying with the Baofeng brand, Baofeng released several new radios in 2023. The UV17 series has several models that are very similar. They have similar features and outside appearance. The whole series got really confusing when different vendors gave the same name to a couple of different models. The first UV17 was released in early 2023, and it had a blue screen and old block style letters. It has larger form factor and a solid feel. It also has USB-C charging and 999 channels, and a moderate level of ingress protection. Signal-wise, my test showed it was clean. Shortly thereafter, Baofeng released UV17 Pro with GPS. This version has the same 999 channels, USB-C charging, and has the same case and build quality. Where this version differed was with a new modern font, some GPS capability, and six receive and three transmit bands. One of the receive bands was the AM airband. The downside to this radio is that it isn't available from US vendors. Your main source will be AliExpress or eBay. It has an IP54 ingress protection score, so should be fairly safe in the rain. These radios are currently selling in the $35 to $40 range. Unlike the UV17R, which is available on Amazon, these radios both seem to have clean signals. The UV17R did not, as we'll discuss later. The last from Baofeng is the Baofeng UV21R. Like the UV17 series, this radio released in mid-2023 and has just become available on Amazon.com. Also like the UV17 series, the UV21R has an IP54 ingress protection score and an identical menu structure. The radio comes with a charging cradle and can be charged via USB-C. It also has a wireless frequently scan function allowing you to determine what frequency and CTC or DCS code another radio is using. It also includes a long 15-inch flexible antenna in addition to the standard rubber ducky. Signal-wise, the UV21R is much better than the UV17R. Again, 
using my tiny SA, the first three harmonics were minus 40 dB below the fundamental, barely, and were close to 0 0.025 milliwatts total. The case of the UV21R is a bit different from the UV17, and the color display is a bit longer with modern fonts. The menu fonts on the UV21 are a little smaller due to the difference in the screen's aspect ratio. The UV21R also doesn't include airband. Coming right in at $30, it's worth a look. Another radio that captured a lot of buzz early in the year was the Quanshang UV-K5. The K5 and the K5 parentheses 8 are the same radio with different cases. One of the interesting aspects of the K5 is the availability of open source firmware. That firmware will really open up the radio's direct conversion receiver across a wide frequency range. If you're interested in the ones and zeros of radio firmware, you might find the K5 interesting from a programming perspective. Otherwise, the K5 is fairly typical for the latest generation of budget HTs. Even with its stock firmware, it has numerous receive bands, including air band and the usual 2 meter and 70 centimeter ham bands. Coming in near the bottom of the price range at about $25, the K5 is a good entry-level device with the kind of performance you'd expect from that price point. It has the usual features with average performance overall. Signal-wise, it was marginal. The first harmonic approached the minus 40 dB level. Again, with my tiny SA, I gave it the benefit of the doubt. Second and third level harmonics were fine. I've included the TID Radio H6 in this list, despite it being a couple of years old. Like most of the radios from 2020, it has 128 channels and no USB-C charging. It is a 10 watt radio that I tested out at about eight watts. Where it really shines is in the included accessories when purchased on Amazon. It includes a spare battery, a car charger, speaker mic, programming cable, earphone mic, extra high-gain antenna, a belt clip, and a lanyard. At under $50, it's still a good buy, even in 2023. Signal-wise, it was clean. Another 10-watt radio from TID Radio is the H8. This little radio had a bit of a rough start. However, the version that's shipping now is quite good. The H8 has 200 channels, built-in Bluetooth for programming using the OD Master app, FM broadcast reception, and a nice color screen with modern fonts. I recently got the most recent version and just released a new video review. I was part of the beta testing for this radio and the current edition is pretty cool with USB charging and upgradable firmware. The H8 has NOAA weather channels and three power levels. High power in the VHF band was just over 9 watts, so pretty close to what's advertised. The latest changes fixed a number of annoying issues, and my latest signal purity test showed a fairly clean signal. At just over $55, the H8 is near the top of the budget price category. Last on our list of budget-priced ham HTs is a new release in 2023. It's the Redivus RA89 Dual Band HT. In fact, it's kind of right at the transition point between budget and moderately priced HTs. This radio has a high IP score of IP68, which means it's dustproof and waterproof when submerged down to 1.5 meters for 30 minutes. It's USB-C chargeable and has a LCD dot matrix screen. That means it doesn't have the fancy fonts, but it also has good visibility in bright sunlight. The RA89 has three power levels, and what is fairly unique to these small HTs is that the screen backlight not only has a timer to save power, but it can also be dimmed. Coming in, as I said, just around $80, this is one of the more expensive radios on the budget list. 
With its high IP score and really solid feel, it seems to be a good value for the price. Now, as I alluded to earlier, there are a couple of radios that didn't make the list. Two that are very similar are the Radiotity GC5 and the UV17R. These two dropped out due to really poor signal quality. This is very strange in that the UV17 and UV17 Pro with GPS I bought early in the year had clean signals. I'm not sure what happened to these US models, but the spurious emissions were terrible. In fact, according to my little tiny SA, the GC5's first harmonic was outputting more power than the fundamental. Someone changed something in the manufacturing process and filtering went out the window. Another radio that is generating a lot of buzz but didn't make the list is the TalkPod A36+. Plus. It has a solid feature set and is priced about $50. It also seems that its ability to be unlocked and allow both GMRS and ham frequencies has caught a lot of people's attention. I don't have one, but other reviewers have consistently shown the spurious emissions of this radio in the ham bands are quite bad. The UV17R, the GC5, and the TalkPod A360 Plus are all very cool radios with all the right features. Unfortunately, signal purity issues kept them off the list. Well, that's my list of the best HTs for 2023. Please feel free to leave a comment to add your favorite budget HT. I'll have some affiliate links below for some of the radios I've listed. Be sure to give the video a thumbs up and subscribe to the Gadget Talk channel if you haven't already. Join me over here for a list of the best premium ham HTs for 2023. 73, and thanks for watching.